if he is the guy, and I've said this, if he's the guy, you'll know this year. You'll know by Thanksgiving. If you if you look at what the league has become, much easier for quarterbacks. Green Bay was left with a very interesting QB situation, and overall, nobody really knows what to expect from this team this season. It's very real that this team has some uncertainty, and many fans are concerned about what may happen, but I think everyone just needs to calm down and take a breath, because this team is headed in the right direction, and I'm actually a big Jordan Love believer, and I think he's a little bit of experience away from being a solid QB in this league. In this video, I'm going to be talking about what the expectations are for the Packers this 2023 season and why they might be better than you would think. But before I begin, I would really appreciate it if you would drop a like and subscribe. It only takes 5 seconds, plus you can always change your mind. I'm on the road to 20,000 subscribers and all your support truly means the world. Alright, so starting off, I want to go in depth on Jordan Love because like every team, the QB is the catalyst for basically everything. Most Packers fans have mixed feelings about Love, not because of anything he did, but because the Packers drafted him in 2020 after an NFC Championship run, and the front office really did nothing to improve the roster around Rodgers, which ultimately, since we don't know what Love truly is made of just yet, there are so many questions surrounding this offense, like will they run the ball more with Aaron Jones, will they utilize the speed they have with Christian Watson and the young receivers, and what does them using two picks on tight ends in the draft mean? So yeah, even though Jordan Love obviously has a ton of pressure and expectations to live up to with the fans, the Packers most definitely aren't expecting him to live up to anything near what Rodgers was, and he's going to have to develop thick skin because the fan base has only seen greatness over the last four decades, and even if he does decent, he won't have many people impressed. And for Love, even with being in the NFL for a few seasons behind Rodgers, he didn't get much attention at all really, and obviously he's super inexperienced with being in the spotlight, so it will be very interesting to see how this all translates on the field, because really, we only heard negative things about this guy coming from the media last year, such as how he was struggling in practice, and nobody ever really talked about his upside. He's obviously been up and down as expected, and in his first preseason game, he threw for 46 yards and a touchdown. I'm actually very curious to see how Matt LaFleur runs this offense this season because as I said, there are so many ways it could go. LaFleur has always been able to coach a good offense, but many people gave the credit to Rodgers, so this is his year to prove to everyone what he is really all about. Alright, switching gears to the offensive line that will be protecting Love, this is another positive that can be looked at with this team because it's pretty solid. David Bakhtiari was back to all pro form at left tackle and obviously that's huge because protecting the blind side of your franchise QB is super important. On the right side of the line there are a few questions and moving parts but they have a lot of good options for who should start. And as for the backfield behind them, you still have Aaron Jones who actually took a pay cut to stay with the team and then you got AJ Dillon and really I think the running game is going to be the biggest part of the offense and will be utilized the most out of anyone this season for Green Bay. Especially if it ends up taking Jordan Love a little while to get accustomed to what the NFL is really like. I think this is especially going to be a big season for Aaron Jones because for whatever reason with Rodgers, they just didn't use him in the receiving game that much and even though he's listed as a running back, he's a pretty pretty good receiver, and it really opens up his game because a lot of the running backs in the league are one dimensional, so I hope they run a lot of screens and dump offs to Jones because I want to see the numbers he can put up from it. Switching over to the defensive side of things, there's also a ton of room for optimism starting with the defensive line up front. Preston Smith is going to be there as an edge rusher, and Lucas Van Ness, who was drafted in the first round will also be there as well, and he will see the field a ton with the injuries at his position. On the interior of the line, they also of course have Kenny Clark and then Devontae Wyatt who looked pretty good in his small sample size last season, so expect to see a heavy dose of him on the field as the year progresses. And being realistic, this is a huge year for the defense because if they don't perform, then Joe Barry might be out of a job, because last season, this was expected to be a top 10-5 to 5 defense and they just weren't. But now he has a second chance to redeem himself. As much as people love to voice their frustrations about how this unit did last season, you do have to give them some credit because they played a lot better down the final stretch of the year and they were forcing a good number of turnovers. There definitely are a few positions on this defense that could use some improvement, highlighted by safety, which is a spot that the Packers are really banking on some of the guys they brought in to fill. 
And really throughout the whole secondary, there's room for improvement with depth, but I still think they have enough talent to perform, and it's all on Barry's shoulders. So yeah, overall, I think the Packers have more than enough talent to be successful in the 2023 season, but it's all going to come down to if Jordan Love can quickly adapt to the NFL and the Packers scheme, and if the defense can do the job that they are being heavily paid to do. And one final last reason to be optimistic about this team is that they play a pretty easy schedule overall, especially in the early part of the season, which is just perfect because if Love can get a few early season wins under his belt, I think that will be huge for his confidence. That's that's really all I have to say for this video. I think there's a lot of reason to be confident in this Green Bay team heading into the upcoming season and this is one of the teams that have a lot of people's eye because like I said, nobody really knows what to expect. They could be a 3 win team or they could be a 10 win team and take home their division. And can you imagine if Jordan Love outplays Justin Fields and has a better record than the Bears? Man, I don't think the whole city of Chicago would be able to handle it. Anyways, in recap, this is the year that we will find out what Jordan Love is made of, and with some of the young speedy receivers, it will be interesting to see if anyone besides Christian Watson will break out into a star. And also, I can't wait to see how Matt LaFleur uses the talented backs. And for the defense, this is a huge make or break year. Let me know in the comments below how you're personally feeling about this team as we approach week one kickoff, and drop your record predictions. For me, I'm gonna go with 8 and 9, because like I've been saying this whole video, it may take some time for Love to learn the game at the NFL level, and I think he's gonna have a lot of ups and downs. Thank you all so much if you made it to this point, and if you enjoyed and haven't yet, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe, because your support truly means the world. We are so close to the start of the season, so there is so much to talk about across the league, so let me know what you would like to see next, and until then, I will see you all later.